Hello, in this video we're going to add some flexibility and robustness to the last uh, project in the, in the last video. So let's start off with the client and what we're going to do is instead of connecting to the loopback every time we're going to allow the user to type in an IP address to parse. So let's open up the GUI of the client form. I'm going to make this a bit bigger. Add a label, call it address or IP since we're only allowing the user to type in an IP instead of any old address. You can use pre-existing methods to um, resolve host names to IP addresses, but we're not going to do that. Okay, I'm going to find a text box here. We're going to rename this text box to text address and IP label IP and we're going to rename the input box to text input. Okay and now we're going to replace IP address here loop back with IP address parse and we're going to accept the text address dot text property. We're going to go back to the client form and use the loopback address as our default address to save us time. And so I'm going to hit connect and it will connect. And we're going to start up this client again. And I'm going to type in my loopback IP address. Hit connect and I've connected. You can tell because the uh, send button enables. And I'm going to start another client. And we're just going to type in any old IP address. Shouldn't it be showing an error message box or something? I suppose it's actually trying to connect asynchronously to that uh, invalid IP address and there's a bit of a timeout. I'm going to connect and then I'm going to close my client and we get this error message regarding the server saying an existing connection was forcibly closed by the remote host and that's because we're disposing of our socket before closing the connection between the corresponding sockets. So we're going to do that in our client client socket is not equal to null because it may not be assigned to if we haven't tried to connect and client socket dot connected uh, the, the use of this is very limited but I'm still going to use it anyways what we want to do here is we want to close the client socket so it's going to disconnect the sockets and release the resources and if your connections, if your server and your client are actively communicating and you can't really tell if they're going to be communicating when you call closed or not, you may want to call shutdown and shut down both. So client socket dot shutdown. It's going to disable both send and receive for the current socket. But this will do for now. Now let's run it and see how it works. So I'm going to hit connect and I'm going to send some data and I'm going to exit and you'll notice that my text box is flickering here it's because it's trying to receive data from the the client socket but the client socket is no longer connected so the method is going to yield uh, an empty buffer and um, I'm basically just submitting zero characters to the text box so let's go to the server form, scroll down to where we're receiving stuff, and right here we want to say if received is equal to zero, then return. And it's safe to assume that the client has disconnected if we have received zero bytes. 
and we can just return, meaning that this line won't be uh, ran down here, begin receive, and we won't be, be able to receive any more data. So it's not going to bug out like that. So connect, send, send some data, and close. And we're good. Now we want to be able to reconnect the client to the server. So let's do that. Basically all I have to do is at the end of this code here, I'm going to say, actually I'm just going to copy this code up in the um, start server method down here. So let's try it out. I'm going to connect, send some data, hit close, and we're going to reconnect another client where this just the same client and whatever you want to refer to it as. And we're going to connect and send some more data. Good, good. And what we want to do is on the end of accept callback, we're going to append to the text box a client has connected. Also, where we're receiving text from the client, we want to say client says. So I'm going to connect. It says client has connected. And then we're going to send some data. Okay, in the client form, we're going to write a method called update control states. I'm just going to use this method here. And we're going to make a toggle. And so if true, then we're going to allow sending. Otherwise, we won't. So button connect.enabled is equal to not toggle. And um, label ip.visible. So if we're sending, then this should not be visible. So not toggle. And we're going to do the same thing for the text input or address, sorry. Not visible is equal to not toggle. So when we make a connection, we want to enable sending and disable everything else. And I spelled that wrong, so I'm going to correct that. So we're going to connect. And you'll notice that all I have to click is the send button, so I'm going to send. But what if I exit the server and hit send? It's just going to give me a message continuously. Let's reset when that happens so we can reconnect to a server. True. So we're going to update control states and pass in false to indicate that we're not sending and we need to connect. Okay, so connect and send some data, exit the server, send data, and it's going to reset. So we can reconnect to a server. So I'm going to run a server again. And we're going to connect to it. We could send some stuff to this one. Now we're going to write a command that when sent to the server will exit the server. So let's go to the server form down in the, the receive callback where we're receiving. We're going to test the text value to see if it's equal to this exit switch. And if it is, then we want to close the client socket, close the server socket. and exit the application. Okay, so we're going to send that command to the server. So I'm going to connect and I'm going to type in dash exit. And it just exited the um, server. And that's all for this video. See you later.